So I'm going to do our uh, usual thing of asking conceptual questions of uh, generative AI. And then we'll um, see how much time we have left and take it from there. And I'm uh, kind of excited. Um, I don't know if these are, these are probably not the questions where ChatGPT was getting wrong yet. But um, later on, especially when we have more of a like a special relative the paradox questions, I think next week maybe, uh, I'm excited to see you know how well perplexity does. There's a, a twin paradox related question that I don't think a ChatGPT did all that well. Um, so ChatGPT 3.5. So I'm interested in seeing how well does a perplexity do. So okay, is Earth an inertial frame of reference? Uh, let's ask and <laughs> see how well it does. Uh, so to consider Earth as inertial frame of reference, we have to ignore rotation of Earth and the orbital motion of Earth. Or, you know, say that the kind of acceleration that's involved with that is negligible in the context or something. Or um, you are using like a momentarily co-moving frame kind of deal. Let's see, uh, initial frame reference, yeah. Classical, undergoing, yeah, good. That's the definition. Earth is not, yeah, rotates on an axis and revolves around the sun. That's great, you got them both. Uh, yeah, all those um, fixed to Earth's surface can be approximate inertial because, yeah, they are, they are small. Yeah, good, good. That, this is a perfect answer. It basically brought up the phenomena, Coriolis's force, that um, like you see that in weather patterns. So if you're talking about like a substantial, uh, like a, a hundreds of miles of section you, within that, you can kind of see the impact of Coriolis, the forces associated with rotating uh, a frame. But outside of that, yeah, it's like a, me sitting in this office feels like an inertial reference frame. Um, and now the second, uh, the third paragraph. Let's see. I have a feeling it's wrong. Uh, can be considered because it either rests or moving it. It's not actually moving at constant velocity. I mean, it's the sun is orbiting around the center of galaxy, so it is accelerating. <laughs> so it's not exactly moving at constant velocity. Uh, approximation moving due to yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 So, yeah. all right. That's actually a good answer. Uh, well, neither. Yeah. So, so I think that's that's a great answer. Uh, maybe even the right length. Uh, let me not depict that uh, and move on to the next. Um, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, can you explain? Uh, can you explain what a momentarily co-moving frame, uh, inertial reference frame is? It's an idea that sometimes people bring up, especially in like upper division, greater level relativity. Um, it's definitely not lower division, uh, special relativity. But um, let's see what um, perplexity says about that. rest. And to elaborate, accelerating through space, yeah, that's what, when you use it. Um, yeah, I think, it, so I remember Google searching for this and not getting a um, really good hit. And I think this is a um, reasonably good description. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, 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 good, good. I, I don't know if uh, any of the references there are uh, like a, a single uh, good reference, but let's see. It's probably using, yeah, like a stack exchange, that sort of stuff. And I remember getting a stack exchange hit before and looking at it and thinking, ah, is that a good reference? But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do like the summary here. That's uh, uh, what, um, yeah, what should be given to someone asking about this. <laughs> okay, let me move on to the next question. Okay, let me read the question while it's answering. Consider non duration to whom does the last time? Yeah, that's my previous session <laughs> um, where my speaker was basically disabled, but eh, no, no harm done. <laughs> uh, 
removing me the process. So here's where I recommend a phrase that I think I mentioned in the, the like a chapter overview video, which is uh, these are the phrases that help you remember what goes where when you're dealing with uh, time dilation and when you're dealing with the length of contraction. For time dilation, the phrase is moving clocks are slow. So however you work out everything, uh, it should fit with the uh, uh, maxim that moving clocks are slow. If it doesn't, you made a mistake, fix it. <laughs> and uh, with the length contraction, the phrase is moving rollers are short. So however you work out the uh, gamma factors, uh, if the, it should work out so that when you measure the length of the moving roller, they should be short. So here, uh, it lasts time for the process appears, takes longer. So if you think of the process as being like its own clock, then uh, as it's moving, it should be slow for you. Um, so the observer who's uh, uh, um, moving relative to the process, that would be the observer like in the lab frame, and the thing is moving um, you know, relative to the lab frame. To that observer, the process should appear to take longer. And the observer measuring the proper time is the observer moving with the process. Because for that observer, the process is at happening in a, at, a, at rest uh, uh, frame. So the second observer measures the proper time. Let's see what perplexity says. Right, last time, yeah, such as, um, takes longer for the observer moving relative. Okay, good. Um, yeah, proper time, uh, moving with the measures proper. So that's a correct answer. Now, I'm not sure, so, you know, so it's not giving you that phrase to memorize, which <laughs> I guess why would it? It's my specific thing. But um, it, this is the kind of thing that people really do make a lot of mistakes on, you know, where does gamma go? Does it go in the numerator or denominator? And uh, if you don't want to, you know, constantly have to look up a formula, I recommend memorizing this phrase because that phrase will help you remember, you know, does it go in the numerator or the, or the denominator? Uh, it can sometimes be confusing because for length of contraction, it goes the other way. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, something that we'll probably talk about uh, next week is there's something that you might call time dilation paradox. Imagine observer A in the lab and observer B in the the in the you know the rest, uh, in the frame that's uh, measuring proper time for the process. Imagine both of them have uh, the same process. So observer A looking at observer B's process thinks that that process is taking longer. Flip it around, look at what observer B's description of observer A's process will be. And the answer should be observer B observes observer A's process to be taking longer also. Time dilation is symmetric. And how does that happen? Uh, today, this week, we don't have the tools to explain that, but with or tools to explain that in a clear, succinct, concise, non-confusing way. But next week, we will. Um, the relativity paradox are kind of useful to test your own understanding of ideas of special relativity. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, so this is good enough of an answer, but I think uh, a lot of people won't actually quite remember um, <laughs> which is the correct one. <laughs> if you step away for an hour and you know have to do it again, uh, so and you know you can't refer to formulas or whatnot. V is equal to zero point nine nine five c. Let me make sure. Okay. Yeah. So depending on either way of describing, either you are using time dilation to explain or length contraction to explain. It's kind of fun uh, way to uh, practice using either of those two um, special relativistic effect formulas. So from the perspective of cosmic ray muon, quite different, yeah. So muon, it's, it's not extended, it, but it ob observes length of contraction. Uh, that's really good. Yeah, that two microseconds, the muon explain. Let's see how it describes the length contraction. Yeah, so that's the formula for length contraction for this. So because this is on the numerator, gamma is actually on the denominator, and it works out so that you know moving uh, all things are uh, contracted. That's the formula 
for the muon traveling at that this yeah distance so it's that distance from where it was created to where it decays it's uh, yeah that's a contract so you can think of that as the moving ruler uh, the distance from upper atmosphere to the sea level that distance is contracted so um, means yeah yeah correct answer <laughs> to calculate the contracted length from you know, perfect yeah that, that's all good probably uh, did I ask you to do the other thing uh, let's see sea level this by describe in, in from the perspective yeah I guess I don't ask, ask you to describe it from the perspective of the earth frame so Oh, so okay, yeah, that's great answer. No, uh, no notes. Um, and I think this is probably about the right length. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, um, um, so yeah. So to make it shorter, you could probably skip that because that's in the textbook. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it's hard to make this uh, shorter than this and still contain all the relevant things. So final question, um, probably, you know. <laughs> we'll answer well. Uh, if postulates are zero, we'll, go, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, something about things don't move at speed of light, probably. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, what the so these days the more closest to everyday um, impact of special relativity is probably GPS. So GPS satellites have to correct for special relativistic effects and general relativistic effects. If they don't, their drift in time is uh, too, too much. So in order to keep them all synchronized, they have um, some kind of thing that corrects for their relativistic effects. Uh, I don't know what other things uh, need, like what other everyday things need a relativistic correction um, for them to function. Um, but let's see, uh, why haven't I noticed the facts? General applicable, no impact because yeah, things are uh, they are only significant when objects are moving at speeds that are at a substantial fraction of the speed of light, um, which most objects don't. The most common objects that do that are, I guess, every day, as in you can see it without any. Um, Lab specialized lab equipment would be the cosmic rays. Uh, and you can actually visualize it with something called a cloud chamber. Um, that's one. <laughs> and if you have any radioactive stuff, some of the radioactive stuff can get uh, relativistic speeds. The uh, people whose job involves relativistic things every day are particle physicists, so like uh, particle accelerators. Uh, in the realm of everyday cars and yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, there's a, some people who took atomic clocks on an airplane and measured the, the, the actual time dilation due to uh, gravitational and speed effect, uh, uh, like on an airplane going around the Earth. I think there's a video of that somewhere, if you look it up. Um, and the atomic clocks are precise enough that you can measure that kind of effect. Uh, yeah, at everyday speeds, yeah, so small, yeah. Special, some strange to us, because are part of... Um, our brains have involved, yeah. So uh, one thing that I do want to mention is, so you know, uh, when we say special relativistic effects seem strange to us, I think uh, there's uh, multiple levels of that. The first level would be um, like uh, realizing that the effects like a time dilation and length of contraction are real effects. They actually happen. That's one, the first level. And when we talk about relativistic paradoxes next week, that second level is the level where we have accepted time dilation and length contraction as real effects. Like uh, we are not confused about time dilation and length contraction happening. And even with that acceptance, there are some um, thought experiments, some scenarios where you see contradictory, strange, even stranger things. Um, so, so we'll get to that next week. I don't think this paragraph is getting at that special, the relativistic paradoxes, but you know. Um, yeah, since you know, yeah, yeah, this is just us saying, yeah, time dilation, it's not familiar to us. Um, but even when that does become familiar, there are scenarios that will be confusing. Uh, in summary, yeah, the imperceptible, yeah. yeah. This is, I think, longer than it needs to be, because the, the simple explanation is, yeah, the, the things don't move near speed of light. So, good, I think that's all the questions. Um,